Yeah. Hi everyone. Uh, last week uh, we made a high five robot, and uh, you should check this video if you did not saw it. And uh, by the way, subscribe to my channel. It will help me and you. It will help everyone. So last week we made uh, this high five robot. It has a brushless motor, the arm with a hand. And this brushless motor is uh, this brushless motor is controlled by the O drive, and O drive is controlled by Arduino. And uh, this uh, robot has a force feedback. What does it mean? It means when there is when there is something in the way of the arm. Uh, the arm tries to push this object. The current inside the arm it rises, goes up. Or drive sees that this current is rises. And Ar Arduino cost constantly asking or drive what the current on the motor, and or drive replies the current on the motor. And when Arduino sees that this current on the motor is higher than the certain threshold, Arduino stops the arm. Uh, like this, this arm goes uh, till the object, afterwards it's tried to push it and it stops. It does not force it too much. And uh, for me it's uh, interesting what is the speed of the communication between all drive and Arduino. This is URT serial communication. And uh, we're gonna check uh, how fast is it. You should understand that this type of control with the force uh, sensing is a super important for the robotic arm like this our robotic arm when it's gonna to crush something it's not gonna force it it's not gonna kill all the gears uh, of this robotic uh, of this robotic arm it's not gonna break that object but it's gonna and stop and just wait or maybe do something else and uh, collaborative robotic arms they do have this feature and we're gonna implement this feature in our future robotic arm too and this is a program with which we check the communication between Arduino and O drive. So this is a program as before. So there is initialization, there is a calibration sequence. Uh, afterwards it goes to the closed loop control. And here's the main part. So first of all, uh, Arduino asks for the current uh, O drive with this long string. And O drive re replied this answer and we check this answer in this loop. And afterwards, we print it in serial monitor. And here, what is Arduino receives? So it receives uh, this uh, nine-digit number, which is uh, basically current on the motor. Now let's see how long it's gonna take uh, to communicate uh, these commands. Arduino uses ten bits per symbol. So this is the string which sends a command for, to ask the current. It has 42 symbols, so it's 420 bits. This is the speed of the communication. So it means 420 bits divided by this speed. It means that it takes 3.65 milliseconds to send this command. For the output, uh, it has uh, 9 symbols as we saw, plus one additional symbol for the end of the line. So it means then in total it's a 10 bit times 10 symbols, it's 100 uh, bit and uh, 100 bit could be sent in 0 0.87 millisecond. So this is my setup, oscilloscope, or drive, so let's switch it on. As you can see two probes of oscilloscope connected to the receiver and the uh, transmitter. This is a calibration sequence. This is what we see on the oscilloscope during the calibration. Okay. Now let's put the oscilloscope into single mode and wait till it triggers. This is 3.6 millisecond is Arduino sending the signal. Afterwards, our uh, drive uh, think about it. And this is the reply of the drive around one uh, millisecond. So it's quite consistent with, uh, consistent with what we calculated. 
So let's see another one. You see this signal stays the same and this one is different. So Arduino is always sending the same signal, but reply is different. The total period is around 5 milliseconds. And as you can see, the most of the time is spent uh, just to send uh, this long uh, string from Arduino to O drive. Now I'm going to control O drive through the USB port, so I have to disconnect this one, disconnect Arduino. I installed all the necessary tools uh, on my computer. All of this is coming from the Odrive Robotic uh, website. So uh, this includes the tools for the developer uh, because I need to update uh, firmware and also of course uh, the tools for the Odrive uh, itself like Odrive uh, tool. So let's uh, just skip it because uh, all of this is already well explained on the Odrive Robotic website. step would be to modify firmware and install it. I downloaded the firmware source on my computer. Now we need to configure the configuration file. It's a tube.config.default and all we need is just to uncomment this line as my board is a 3.5 version 24 volts and now just uh, save this file and rename it to the tube.config. Now we need to build uh, firmware, so type make from the directory, directory of this firmware. And this problem is easy to solve from the system preference, security and privacy. Just push there and it's done. Now make and it's working. Now we need to connect the drive via USB and power it up. Now we will flash firmware. So Odrive tool, DFU, build, Odrive firmware, point hex, enter. Device firmware update successful. Perfect. So now we can modify it as a firmware. Let's do this. From the firmware directory, let's go to the communication directory and the file which we need is ASCII protocol CPP. So let's open it for edit. This file reads the command which is sent um, through the communication protocol. Like for example, there is a P command for the position, V for the velocity, C for the current control. The command which is interesting for us is R command, which stands for the read property. So this is what we would need to copy and uh, modify. So we copied it, paste. We're going to introduce a new command as like scientific, of course, and this is going to be the only command. So uh, we don't need to put anything else afterwards until it will give you immediately the current. So we copy this property, Control C, goes back. And so our name is going to be directly this property, paste. So basically we made a shortcut. So before it was uh, air and also X0 motor car and control IQ measured. And now we can just send S and it will uh, handle it like it's uh, all this long command air X0 motor car and control IQ measured. We don't need this line anymore because we already defined name in the line before. Also we don't need uh, this part. And the end of line should not be here, so I just deleted it. So we finished the program for the axis 0 current, but I also added the same for the axis 1 current, and uh, this is the shortcut is K, so axis 1 motor current. I also made the short, shortcut Y, which is axis 0 position, encoder position, and, X, uh, and shortcut E for the axis 1 encoder position. Like this, Arduino can ask the current and the position of the axis 0 and axis 1 very efficiently and very fast. Now I will copy this file to some safe place, like over here for example. 
I also will copy the configuration file to the same safe place. Copy, paste. I also gonna delete this uh, folder just uh, to start from the fresh. So I'm gonna take uh, the firmware from uh, the original firmware. So copy and paste it here. Now I need to put the configuration file and ASCII protocol. And ASCII protocol CPP should be in communication. Replace. Nice. So it's here. And as before, now we need to flash uh, this firmware on the O drive uh, controller. Make to build, plug in USB, switch on o drive, and we're ready to flash uh, firmware with the O drive tool the view build O drive firmware point hex enter. Firmware update is completed, everything went well, and now we can uh, change Arduino code. Now we're gonna change this uh, long string for the short one, just S. So copy, paste, this is just S, and uh, this line should be commented like this. Perfect. Compile and flash. So I connected again the communication for the Arduino, this one. The power is on. This is the old uh, virus. And now let's see how it works. So, uh, trigger symbol. Oh, way fast. It's like less than two milliseconds. One more time. Again, this is like super fast measurements. So instead of five to six milliseconds, it's less than two milliseconds. Nice, perfect. Now it takes the standard program from the, for the high five robot and we change this variable for S for the current uh, measurements and this variable for Y for the position measurements. And that's it. Now just compile and send it. So current measure position measurements. Now let's check that it's still working properly. So switch it on. This calibration sequence. Now let's capture this. Looks perfect. So The entire cycle takes less than two milliseconds. This looks perfect. Yeah! Let, now let's see if it works better than before. Nice! I think it works just a little bit better. Not much better, but still... It would help if the arm would be soft and uh, this uh, part would be a little bit more flexible. But still, it's quite good. Nice! And now, the most dangerous scene ever made. Don't repeat this at home. Ha! No problem. One more time. Ha! Yeah! Very quickly, just two words about encoder. So, encoder which we used is C U I A M T 10. And this encoder has 8192 counts. 
revolution. And the maximum speed which it can uh, account for is 7.500 RPM, which is uh, approximate, which is 125 revolution per second. Uh, this value we just uh, divided this by 60, 60 seconds in minute. So this is a uh, counts per revolution of this encoder. And in our program for to move our arm, we used 130,000 counts. So and the uh, gearbox which we use, it has a 32 reduction ratio. So it means that in order uh, for one revolution of the gearbox, uh, encoder should count 32 times 8192 counts. So now we can divide this, we can take this value. So how many counts we want to do? Divided it by 32 times 8192. And we have approximately 0 0.5 revolution. And this is exactly what we saw that uh, our arm it moves around uh, half of the turn. And this is the maximum RPM. So uh, this maximum RPM is corresponds to how many counts? It's uh, it's it's what it's what it's. Uh, let's put it here. It's. Uh, counts per revolution, this is uh, revolution per second, so it means 8192 times 125, and this is going to be speed, maximum speed in counts per second. And this is equal to 1024000 count per second. So we're still in our program way far from the maximum limit of this encoder. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.